Hey there, it's going to be another one of these videos where I just talk at the camera about something I want to talk about. So I hope you're interested in listening, because today we're talking about uh, some Dragon Age theory crafting, which is just kind of a fancy way of me saying I'm going to make a lot of shit up uh, based on what I think is going to happen uh, in the future of the Dragon Age franchise on a specific topic. Uh, it's going to be a general spoiler warning. I, just to be safe, I, if it's in the Dragon Age canon, Games, books, comics, uh, anything. Pretty much, if you can read it on the Dragon Age wiki, um, I'm pro it, it's open game. So, if you don't want Dragon Age books, specifically The Last Flight, uh, it's gonna be the book that I probably spoil. Uh, if you don't want that spoiled, don't watch. Uh, and if you don't haven't beaten a Dragon Age Inquisition yet and don't want that spoiled, then don't watch. Uh, those are the two big ones. Uh, but just in general, yeah, spoilers. So if I spoil something for you, it's your fault. You made your choice. But, um, so where this all comes from, why I'm making this video, I mean, is, uh, I listened to this podcast, uh, called The Dialogue Wheel. I will include them down in the description below if you want to listen. But they very often talk about, uh, Bioware games, and they did an episode specifically on the Grey Wardens, because they've been doing a lot of Dragon Age stuff since before, and now following, uh, Inquisition's release. And one of the questions that got asked was what do you think is going to happen with the Grey Wardens if, sort of after Inquisition in the future? Um, and their answers were, were okay. They were kind of short and simple, and, which I'm not, it's not bad. Don't, I'm not trying to be, say they're like wrong. It's more just when I think about these things, I, I extrapolate as far as I possibly can to a ridiculous degree. Probably too much. I make way too much shit up in this head, but I think it's fun. It, like you saw with the Spider-Man video, where I just have like an entire, like, pitch for a comic, basically. Um, based on pretty much nothing. So, yeah. And, you know, I want to talk about that, because the Grey Wardens are super important to me. Uh, they're like, I think they're, I probably were with Smartly. You know, they made us love them in Origins, and then in Inquisition. <laughs> They just, they flipped it on its head and they made you consider, like, are you still really just blindly loyal to these guys because you played as one? Or can you see the bigger picture? Um, I want to talk about sort of what the bigger picture I think is. So, first things first, let's just talk about sort of what happens sort of directly, what we know sort of at the end of Inquisition and then, like, extrapolate immediately from that. And then I'll get more and more tinfoily uh, the further we go. Um, so at the end of Inquisition, we get a couple of slides in the epilogue about the Great Wardens. You'll first get one that's about uh, whatever choice you made for them, pretty much. Um, I think I'm actually not sure about the slide. I don't remember what slide you get if you exile them, but I know that if you ally with them, um, there's a slide about them staying in Orlay and sort of going out and helping people more and like seemingly they're like rebuilding and doing like construction and not necessarily just focusing on the dark spawn. Um, they're sort of being general good guys. Or they were or they, you know, or excuse me, they were exiled um, up to the Anderfells to go back to the first warden and the, you know, the head warden area in Weishaupt, which is very far north. Uh, yes, north, north is up. It's true. Uh, but, um, and then there's another slide talking about uh, the survivor of Into the Abyss, uh, the mission into the Fade. I'm, I'm just going to call that character the survivor from now on because it could be Hawk, Alistair, Loghain, or Stroud. So there's four possibilities. I'm just going to say the survivor to simplify this because I don't actually think it's going to matter heavily who the survivor is. It's just going to change who we might be interacting with in the future, but I don't think it's going to drastically change these events. I think they're going to happen regardless. That's sort of the way these games have to go. But we hear that they reach Weishaupt, and then all news out of Weishaupt stops. Just like, in general, people stop hearing reports or news out of what's going on at White South, which is the Warden's Fortress. So our 
Survivor is up there with the leaders of the Wardens, and no one knows anything at all. However, they say that there are rumors of a civil war brewing in the midst of the ranks of the Grey Wardens. And that is what I want to talk about. What is this civil war about? What, you know, I think there's sort of the easy and sort of obvious thing that I think it will come up, but then I think there's also deeper stuff that I'm going to get real tinfoily about. So the very simple stuff, I imagine, let's look at the situation from the first warden's perspective after Inquisition. They, the wardens in Orlais were manipulated by a darkspawn, a uh, warden fortress, an abandoned warden fortress, but still a warden fortress, was uh, completely sieged and overrun. The wardens were either exiled from Orlais or put into the service of a foreign new organization that, like, much like the Great Wardens, isn't a country, they're just a powerful organization. So now, in that way, they're almost sort of rivals, even if they don't want to be. They, they're, they're occupying the same space. So another organization took control of their wardens, or exiled them, and then that organization then killed a Darkspawn Magister, who you guys, who they had attempted to steal away a long time ago, and apparently did not do a good enough job. You're go you're looking really bad. Like, I, I want to be very, you know, like, we we're told a lot that the nations don't really respect the Wardens, for the most part. The Anderfels do, because that's where they live. The other nations, not so much. The other people don't think very strongly of them. Once the Blight's over, they're like, mm -hmm. these can these the thing, the, they'll show up when the next Blight comes, and I don't really care, we can just ignore them. And... The Grey Wars don't really like that. Um, you know, they, they feel like, we've done this five times now. Five times we have sacrificed a lot to save the world. And we deserve a seat at the table, essentially. The big boy table, where all the, the major power players are battling each other for influence and authority and blah blah blah. That kind of stuff. And, excuse me, I think now they look even worse at the end of the news than they ever have because of the Inquisitor and what the Inquisition did. So when you have this messenger from the Inquisition come up and be like, hey, by the way, here's all the stuff that happened and you hear all of this, you're like, we need to do something to assert authority, power, influence, whatever you want to call it. They need to show the world that they are not weak. I think that's what the first warden thinks. That's that If I, you know, I'm not saying I would do that, but in, the, in that situation, that would be this, the, 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 wow. That would be what I was placed into, the, the spot I had to fill. Like, I am the person in charge of this organization who is just disgraced right now, in front of everybody. So, one of the other things about the Grey Wardens, like I mentioned, they're actually very popular in the country they reside in, the Anderfels. And we're told that the king of the Anderfels doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, he takes care of his, like, capital city and, and palace, but otherwise, He's not really influential. The individual areas of the Anderfels uh, have their own leaders who are keeping things under control. And the Great Wardens um, are respected on par with one of those. It is actually said that they are the equivalent of a Ferelden Terran. So think of in, uh, in uh, Dragon Age Origins, uh, Loghain was a Terran. So he, like we have like Bon, Van Tegan, he comes out like Arl Tegan and Arl Eamon in Dragon Age Origins, and then like Terran is above that. So like they're saying in the Anderfels, the Great Wardens have more influence than like the ruler of Redcliffe or the ruler of High Ever. Like, that is a well, actually the ruler of High Ever I think was a Terran. Was it Terran Bryce Guzland? I think it was. 
And it goes Terran Kuzlin. Why is, why is even only an R open? Regardless, it doesn't matter. My point still stands, right? So, and it said that they're respected more than the king. Now, it doesn't say that they have complete power over the Andrefels. It just said their opinion is respected. Their influence is known. So what does that mean? That means there is one place where they can do something to make themselves look good. And they probably need to because they need the Anderfels to keep liking them this much because if they lose that support, they're done. And they also know that there's an unpopular king and they know that they are pretty popular. I think you see where I'm going with this. So again, let's, you know, don't look, going back to, you know, what happens immediately after Inquisition D. The survivor gets there, tells them all this stuff. First Warden's like, mm, I don't like any of this. So him, I think it's him right now. We don't actually know anything about the first, current First Warden. So the First Warden and the Senior Wardens are probably, you know, some of them are probably, you know, getting together and they're like, we need to make a move, make a statement, and do it now. We need to show the world what about the Great Wardens is important. And so they're like, alright, Wardens, here's what we're Here's the plan. We are going to move in. We are going to more notably take control of this of the Antifels. Like directly. We're gonna, you know, tell people basically like you'll have no more corrupt, you know, ignoramus of a king not caring about anything but his his city, basically. And Yeah. And then People will support us being in power because they think we'll actually help them. And with the influence of basically being the rulers of the Anderfels, we will make a statement to the rest of the countries that, like, hey, we don't like what the Inquisition did. We understand they, like, saved the day, but, like, they told our people what to do, and they dealt with the Darkspawn, which is our thing, and they just, like, we are not okay with that, and, like, we have the backing of the Anderfels, and we're not gonna take any more shit from the Inquisition or any of you countries, all right? We are the Grey Wardens, and we are important. And, and I think, you know, you take the Survivor and possibly other Grey Wardens, and they're, they don't like this. They're instantly like, are you crazy? What are you trying to do? Like, certainly some Wardens will agree with that, but then others don't, because this kind of be a civil war. So the opposing side is basically sort of has a couple different arguments and it's one the sort of a split I think in what their uh, side or stance is depending on what you did to the Great Wardens and in Inquisition. So in general, I feel like the survivors just like you guys are the ones who like were you know did not deal with Corypheus properly, um, like ignored everything and let it get this far. To the point where there is Grey Wardens disconnected enough that this could happen to them. So, it's on you. This has nothing to do with the Inquisition. They helped us. If anything, we need to go to them and ally with them. We're not going to do this Anderfels thing. We're not going to publicly go against the Inquisition. This is stupid. You're stupid. It's a bad plan. And then, there's also sort of, you know, the two sides of this. You sort of, if you uh, allied with the Grey or Legion Wardens, and I should, like, make that distinction. If you allied with the Orlesian Grey Wardens, then those people, you know, you basically have this message of people being like, we are doing good work that is more than just patrolling for Darkspawn and occasionally demons. Like, we are helping people, and they are respecting and appreciating us for the first time in what feels like an eternity you want to basically backtrack and go to the asshole regressive wardens that no one likes? Are you joking? No. The Inquisition gave us a chance to help people, and we're taking it. We're, just, we're, we're doing it, alright? And then if you exiled the warden, the Orlesian wardens, they're likely back up at Weishaupt, and they're with the survivor, and they're basically like, you guys want to, you're angry at the Inquisition? This is your fault that this happened to us. We are disgraced because of you. You kept Corypheus's powers a secret. You didn't tell us everything. You were the people and the past wardens that you've kept the secrets of who allowed for it to get this far and allowed Corypheus to manipulate us. 
we're not letting you tarnish our name any further. You've done enough. And things come to blows between these two sides, and that's where I think this Civil War idea is going to come from. Now, I said I would get more tinfoil. I have two things I think are important to talk about. First, I want to talk about it that's slightly less tinfoil it's got more evidence. Is um, Dragon Age The Last Flight, which is a novel that covers the uh, extinction of the Griffins and what actually happens. It basically, there's a modern Grey Warden who is acquiring journals and research about what actually happened to the Griffins because, you know, like a lot of the things that the Grey Wardens know about, they didn't spread those that information very publicly and they kept a lot of secrets to only a few select people. So what you learn, first of all, is that the extinction of the Griffins was because they infect, infected them with the, the taint, with the blight, to make them better against fighting Darkspawn, which worked for a time, but the Griffins more easily succumbed to corruption and turning into monsters that needed to be killed because you couldn't control them, and the blight more easily then spread to the Griffins and Griffin eggs rapidly, and they just started killing them off or infecting them and making diseased monsters really quickly, so the only thing they could do was kill them all. Now, the interesting thing you learn, second thing, so that's, that's pretty bad, but the important part, well, for a lot of us who are fanboys, is that there was one clutch of eggs, that's what they're called, it's called a clutch, uh, that was saved, one clutch of griffin eggs, and that those are in storage somewhere, that are uncorrupted, and they're safe. And they were kept away for a while, and basically, the person who has the journal basically reads what this ancient person who was watching all this and then saved the eggs said basically to them, like, if you find this, like, this is where the eggs are, but don't bring them out unless you think the Grey Wardens are better and won't do it again. Like, I'm hiding them because I think they'll try to do it again, because I think they're stupid. I just do. And it's like, okay, okay. So... Now we have, that's probably going to be a voice in this civil war. You know, they're arguing. And then one, this person comes out with a voice like, actually, by the way, you guys kept the secret that it was the, like, leading wardens centuries ago who caused the extinction of the griffins. And you kept that secret from us and didn't tell us. You know, you didn't know about the eggs, which I, I have, but I'm not telling you where they are because I'm keeping them safe. But, yeah, you guys have this bad tendency of, like, keeping all of these secrets that bite us all in the ass. And we're not okay with this, like, level of secrecy anymore. And so that becomes an issue. I think it will be. And then I imagine the senior wardens are like, we gotta get those eggs. Like, we gotta get them away from these upstarts, rebel upstarts, whatever you want to call them. Because we need, you know, we gotta get the griffins back. And then there's some idiot up there who's like, I think I can perfect the 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 tainting of them so that they can become Grey Warden Griffins. Which is a silly idea. They, they can fight Dark Farm better and it won't I won't bet like I think I I think I, I we can do it better this time. It'll you know it'll work. There's probably gonna be one idiot like that. So that's the conflict. There's a second one. And this is where the tinfoil comes on. The official story uh, that we've gathered from Codex Entries and uh, The World of Thetis, uh, Volume 1, which is a real-life book that you can buy, about Corypheus. And the Grey Warden's ceiling of Corypheus specifically, it is said that sometime at, during or after the first blade or whatever, they found intelligent talking dark, darkspawn, specifically seven of them, led by a very intelligent you know, and powerful one named Corypheus, who was their leader. They well, they call he's calling himself Corypheus, I think. Um, and what we read, they say the first thing they thought they thought was, let's see if we can use that to help us. Let's like let's see if we can weaponize or use this. It said they, they, the reason they realize that they can't is because they, they learn about Corypheus's power to induce a false calling, right? They, the thing that we saw in Legacy, where the Wardens were going crazy 
you know, bladed people going crazy when they got close to Corypheus. Anders has that freak out if you take him. We see that in Inquisition, when he's able to use it to freak out all of the wardens enough to uh, try and summon demons. So they saw that ability and they were like, okay, we can't control this. It, it, it wrecks us. It, it, it can do a lot of bad stuff to us. And so that's when they work on finding a place to seal him. And then, and then he winds up escaping eventually, and then they seal him somewhere else. And then, like, later on, Malcolm Hawk, who's uh, the champion's father, uh, seals him away. And then in Legacy, Hawk and Merrick and everybody, or wherever you took, goes and accidentally releases him. And then kills them. And we know in Inquisition because of Warden Clarell and what she says, when, you, in, when you're sieging, laying siege to Adamant, when you get to Clarell and you tell her, like, no, that we're not going to get a demon servant, the demon's going to bind all of you to Corypheus. And she's like, Corypheus? But he's dead. So it's like, dead? So you, th you know about Hawks killing of Corypheus, and that information was propagated widespread that you all, now all of the wardens apparently, because, you know, whatever, you get my point, all of the wardens knew about what Hawk did and thought that Corypheus was dead. And that's all jumping in my mind, and I am sitting here and I am like, there is a missing piece to this story, because here's the thing, they also, I believe it mentioned that they well, no. Back, let me backtrack. They sealed Corypheus away. The only reason they would do that is it would, would be if they thought they couldn't kill him. Because sealing away is inevitably more difficult and complicated, and a worse solution. No one would suggest that unless they couldn't just kill him. So they must know about his reviving ability. You with me? Like, they have to. Like That, that just makes simple sense. Like They figured out that he can possess Grey Wardens after he dies and get his body back. So they sealed him away. And they know about his calling power. They know about what his effect has on their people. So when Grey Wardens go to this tomb that they are told of, specifically uh, Janica in Legacy, she doesn't seem to be entirely aware of that calling power and the effect it's going to have on her and the other Wardens. And it's just kind of like, okay. And then the story spreads that Hawk dies. And no one in the first Wardens thinks to be like, actually, the records indicate that he can revive himself. Because there's no way. Like, the Wardens get secrets, but that's the kind of thing that the first Warden's going to have a private, like, data that he's going to pass on to the higher-ups. Like, the higher-ups must have data from, or, like, lore from the old Wardens of, of, you know, yonder day, long past, or whatever. But... But they're not sharing it. But they knew that Hawk couldn't kill him. So now they knew, hearing this story, because it's several years between DA2 and Inquisition, and Legacy canonically can happen anywhere in that 10 year period of DA2. So, like, it, it, it's been enough time that Weisshoff would have heard this. It spread to all the wardens, because Clarell says it without a second thought. So they heard some guy went and unsealed Curpheus and killed him. And the first warden didn't choose at that point to be like, by the way, Corypheus can jump into other bodies and might have possessed one of you, and might probably is still alive if there were Grey Wardens there, which you're telling me there were. Also, he has this thing where he can use his powers to, like, mess with Grey Warden's mind and try to take control of you. Kind of like the taint, or the calling. They didn't tell anyone that. Why? Why? That is where I get my tinfoil, and I am like, what is going on with the leadership? Now, tinfoil, like, stupid tinfoil will be like, oh, they're corrupted, oh, they're... No, I don't think they hate Darkspawn. That much is... It's obvious. However, I think that when the Grey Wardens first met Corypheus and thought they could weaponize him in some way, they did something bad. I think something really bad happened. I don't know what at all. I, your guess is as good as mine. 
but I think something really screwed up happened to the point where they said, we can't talk about Corypheus. We will keep these records. We'll tell all these people there's a thing that you need to seal away and you need to keep renewing the seal of. But we're not going to talk about what it is or who he is. Because then... Because then they're going to start digging. And they're going to find this bad thing we did. And that's not okay. That'll get us. That'll be bad for us. And so the current leadership of the Wardens are just like... Shit. They... He... Not only did everything about Curfews come to light and he's killed. Think about the position the Inquisition is at the end of the, the game. No matter which side you pick. Let's say you pick the mage side. You have Samson alive. All of his knowledge is at your disposal. That can lead you to a lot of secrets about Perpheus they don't want you to know because it's that could lead you to whatever the bad thing they did is, right? If you if you side with the Templars, you can have that really old magister who might know some stuff. You have those memory things. No matter either way, in either one you have or Actually, no, just in the Templars, you have access to the Shrine of Dumat, which might have more secrets buried into it. Um, there's just, no matter what, they have a pathway to figure out more stuff about Corypheus after the end of the game. There's still more stuff for them to learn, and I can guarantee you they're going to seek it out in some way. And so, the Wardens are scared. That is why they want to denounce the Inquisition. That is why they want to take power now. Because it, they, they know there's a timer ticking down. And when it hits zero eventually, it's ticking down to someone figuring out that they did this crappy thing and they're going to tell everyone. By the way, the Wardens did this horrible thing back a long time ago. Screwed everything. Or something. I don't know. I just don't know. But I'm worried. Tin foil. Like I said. And being paranoid, but I think that that's what's going on. Uh, to supersede all of the other things, like those are the, the public reasons, those are the things that they're worried about. But it's all, it all comes back to keeping secrets, and that's their biggest secret. There's a secret about Corypheus that they're keeping. They did something, and they didn't share. And because of that, they did not share information that could have saved people. Imagine if they told you, by the way, this guy who's sort of down in the southern part of Thetis that uh, you thought you, he was killed, actually, he probably possessed a Grey Warden and took their body and is still alive, and he has the ability to make you feel like you're experiencing the calling. And then when a bunch of Grey Wardens in Ferelden or Lace are experiencing the calling, they'll be like, oh, it's probably from that. Because all of us? What would affect all of us? What about that Corypheus guy that they said is, like, wandering around? Um, yeah, okay. And then, you know, then that's, you know, bad shit might not have happened. Then, you know, imagine some, oh, you should summon demons to go kill all the arch demons so you don't have to go, before you go in your call, and they're going to be like, you yeah, know, no, I'm not, not buying that, Skippy. I know that this, I know where this is from, and I'm not trusting you. But instead, we got what we got. Why did the Grey Wardens keep that secret? Why are they such heavy secret keepers? I don't know, but there's something there. And where do I think this is all going to be resolved, I guess, is the last question. Like, okay, Alex, right, we, you know, we're told there's going to be a civil war. And we were, you know, told that that's going to happen. And you're telling us what you think it's all about. Okay, where does that lead us? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I'm sure everyone, everyone talks about this. Uh, a great warden DLC for Inquisition, I think, is what we're looking at. You know, everything goes silent out of place out. People get worried, and hopefully either we go to investigate or a scout from the rebel side, you know, sent by the survivor, manages to make it out, come to us and say, you guys need to go to the Antifels. Like, bad stuff is happening. We need your help. There's a full-scale, like, stalemate war between the Grey Wardens, and if it isn't resolved, some bad stuff's going to happen, because the, those people in charge, they really don't like you. They're going to come after you, so you should just deal with this now. And we've got the, you know, post-game map that we can use to get there. 
I just, I really want this to be just true post-game content like we had uh, in Origins with Awakening and uh, Witch Hunt and that Golem DLC of Amgarak that no one cares about. Point is, I think we're going to be seeing that. I'm, you know, there's, I mean, maybe we'll be seeing it pretty soon. I'm sure they'll be announcing it in the coming months. They have to. I'd be surprised if they don't have something either by E3 or at E3 to show us for Inquisition DLC, especially because if they don't have Mass Effect done, then I think uh, EA needs Bioware to, or we'll get their new IP. I don't know. I, now I'm full of speculation, but I think we're going to get this as a DLC. It is the most promising plot thread that's just left open, and they know they, they can't sit dangling on us with the fates of Hawk or Alistair or, I mean, I guess, I, I, I think the fate of Logan would be interesting, but I guess some people don't give a crap. Or Stroud. You, if, if Stroud's alive in your game, I commend you for being noble enough to sacrifice your Hawk. I was only noble enough to sacrifice my personal, like, cannon Hawk for Alistair in my first playthrough. After that, I rewrote my cannon, and now I had Logan. <laughs> Which you saw on my um, on my let's play. If you haven't, go watch my let's play. It's bad. Um, I guess I should wrap that up or wrap this up. So thank you for watching. Um, if you have thoughts about the Grey Wardens and Corypheus and all Civil War nonsense bullshit, uh, leave a comment. Uh, go listen to the Dialogue Wheel podcast. Their Grey Warden episode was very amusing, and they talked about some interesting stuff. There's a link to their uh, website down in the description below. And see you next time.